Let my servants be few and secret. They shall rule the many and the known. Book of the Law, Alistair Crowley. So I think if everything has gone according to plan, you should be able to hear us. And we have zotted most of the gremlins. Uh, yes, and so thank you also to Twin Dad, to Dave, who uh, skated in here at the last minute to produce for us. So uh, welcome to Vorpal Tales and Rebellion, a Vampire the Requiem Chronicle with an added bonus of Belial's Brood. Be prepared for some serious violence this chronicle. As always, here at Vorpal Tales, we run one and sometimes two games every day. Uh, if you want more grim dark horror, then check us out on Mondays where we will be running Solemn Vale. You can also find Twilight 2000 and Mecha Hat on Taco Tuesdays, followed by Season 2 of Followed and Wednesdays. And uh, coming up this Monday is the season finale for Dune. That's going to be exciting in awful ways. Uh, yeah, and then on Sunday, uh, there will be no white walls, but you can see Rosie uh, run the second part of uh, Putanesca in Space, Vampires in Space. It's, it's ridiculous. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and we will resume white walls next week. So stay up to date on our current shows by following Vorpal Tales on Twitter and Instagram. And if you still want more Vorpal content in your life, come join our Discord and hang out with a bunch of wholesome new nerds. For now, for Sworn, please introduce yourself and you can shut up. <laughs> introduce yourselves. It's so... Hi. Sorry. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Ambrose, and I, the words that have been coming out of our mouths today have been amazing. Um, you can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling, <laughs> and you can find me on Etsy at Neat and Co Designs. We, anyway, tonight I will be uh, playing Mateo de la Silva, whose pronouns are he him, my own pronouns are he they. Uh, Ooh. Hello, I'm Larry Cacciola, the best nerd. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama, because I'm also Kisama, and I'm playing Larry the Venture. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Chaldean Khalil. I'll be playing um, Paris Androfinos, uh, and you can find me on Twitter at, at KKhalil. Excellent. Uh, I will be your storyteller this evening. My name is Rachel. You can find me stolen fires pretty much everywhere. Uh, Ambrose, would you care to read the recap? Absolutely. I love reminding our audience of what chaos we got up to. Every so often, Devin will message me asking if he should drop an elder god summoning on this. And I'm like, they're, they're doing it to themselves. We're, we're doing fine on our own. <laughs> he is a living summon the elder gods. Uh, okay. <laughs> the other two of you help a lot. Well, I mean, we're some minor elder gods. It's, you know. As the sirens come closer... Larry shoves his bleeding hand in Rose's mouth, creating a second stage of blood bond with her. The cops, fire department, and other various emergency services arrive on the scene completely and utterly horrified. Larry and Natalie decide to play dead to escape repercussions. Mateo doesn't quite like the idea of being bagged up, so he looks to Rosa and asks if she'd rather go somewhere safe instead of having to deal with the police. She nods fervently, so she and Mateo escape out of the emergency exit. When the coast is clear, Rosa and Teo peel off to the safety of the haven. Meanwhile, Paris had arrived to the action and started making a TikTok. 
they use their skills to figure out which bag has Larry, then utilizing their awe to cause a commotion, shout that the bag moved. It moved. The person inside is still alive. The emergency responder unzips the bag as Larry initiates blush of life to fake being not dead, playing living. It kind of works, and Larry has rushed to the ER for operating on the thing protruding from his neck. They think they lose him and call time of death. Larry awakens in the morgue, heals his wound, and gets up to walk out. During Larry's unlife or death surgery, Paris is in the coroner's van rifling through the body bags to find Natalie. They tell her the only way out is for her to bite the driver and for Paris to take the wheel. Unfortunately, the driver was watching in the rear view and saw this coming, so panics like you do. Natalie commands the driver to stop using Dominate. The coroner's van comes to a screeching halt. The bodies and Paris, not having been buckled in, go flying. Making a quick recovery, Paris pulls their gun and holds it to the driver while telling Natalie to give that nibble another try. Natalie only takes a bit and withdraws, refusing to kill. Paris declares that if Natalie really does love Larry, she'll kill him so he doesn't rat her out her sire. She finally concedes. When she drains the driver, she goes to turn him. But Paris halts that process with one shot to the driver's head. Hmm. Can you still turn them after the head's gone? Natalie, infuriated, stalks off in the direction of home. The devil on Natalie's shoulder also known as Paris, talks her into getting an Uber and heading to the hospital to pick up Larry. Mateo and Rosa arrive at the Haven to find the door ajar. Entering together, Mateo quickly realizes that Lydia has been abducted by her sire after a huge tussle. The Uber arrives at the hospital as Larry, coincidentally, meets them outside for the ride home. They get back to the haven together to see the same mess that Mateo and Rosa came upon. Mateo explains that his investigations led him to believe that Lydia was abducted by her sire, but not without a fight. Natalie absconds to another room with Rosa to get her calmed, and Larry eavesdrops. At a point of learning that Natalie and Rosa intend to run away, taking Larry with them, and possibly snitch to Devin the hunter. Larry barges in to scold Natalie, closing the door behind him. Suddenly, Paris bursts into the room, walloping Larry with the door. They're holding a makeshift chalice in a rusty box cutter. Time for Valerie! Natalie and Rosa leave, a defiant streak flaring up in Larry's child. Matteo tries to talk her out of it, but she insists he's never helped her. Matteo listens to Larry and Paris, letting the two women go. Having increased their crux, a memory of when they felt they truly belonged is shared between Larry, Paris, and Teo. A group hug is shared. After the Valdry, Larry goes to track Natalie's phone. It's clearly been abandoned at the bus station that Natalie met Rosa at. Our venture excuses himself, tracking down with a quick investigation of the bus route. It leads him a block away, finding Natalie loading Rosa's family and belongings into a van. While Natalie and Rosa are in Rosa's apartment, Larry offs the grandmother, but the grandkid escapes from the van and screams. Rosa and Natalie come rushing out. Larry informs Natalie that her actions have consequences. As he chokes Rosa into unconsciousness. He'll give her a new beginning, as a blood doll. He sends Natalie into the house with unconscious Rosa, as Larry goes to find the nine-year-old boy. His own childhood flashes back into his mind, and Larry tells the small child to run away and never to look back. He does so as Larry and Natalie carry the unconscious Rosa back to the haven. 
Arventry realizes that his child has begun to fight her blood bond. The sun rises and it's dead time for our blood suckers. All right. Thank you so much for reading the recap and thank you for taking the notes as well. Uh, all right. And so correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember Rosa also being tied up or somehow like restrained so she couldn't run away. I think so. Locked okay. in a closet. So basically. Oh, that's right. I made a joke about Rosa needing to come out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Rosa. Poor everybody. All right. So you all go down for the day as the sun comes up and your daymares are a lot more intense and vivid than you're used to them being. And so, Mateo, you dream of yourself in the form of a wolf. And running across this wide, flat, open landscape um, with another pack of wolves. And as you sort of just run, you experience this sense of freedom that you've never really felt before. As you realize that you're not just running across a field, you are running across worlds and crossing from one realm of being to another. And for Larry, you return to Italy in the 1500s, and you return to the dream of being a, a mortal man. And in this dream, Natalie is your daughter. And you can't, you know, just the dream cycles where you have just all these father-daughter interactions with her, uh, you know, watching her get married, uh, watching her have children and grow up. And always in the back of your head, you know that this is a dream and that this isn't real but you still have this feeling of, but it could be. And Paris, your dreams involve you being uh, essentially a cult leader. So from the brief information that you gathered about what was going on in the movie theater, you, your dreams have you in place of the leader and just having hordes of mortals ready, willing, and able to complete your will and to fulfill what you want to do. And so, you know, it's been eight, 10, 12 hours as the sun arcs across the sky. And as it finally begins to set, you slowly come out of these dreams. And so the scene is yours. I don't know about YouTube, but I... I had the most amazing sleep death i'm still never really sure what to call it but i felt so free i've never felt like that before Um, yeah, I, I kind of had my usual dreams myself. Well, what are your usual dreams? I'm almost afraid to ask. Um, 
No, I mean, you know, kind of like yours, you know, being free, you know, doing what I want, that kind of thing. Having like people who care about you around, you know. Yeah. Hmm. It sounds think- nice. Oh, I, th- I thought for sure Natalie would have eaten you in there. <laughs> Just a little nibble. Just a little nibble. She looked hungry. She looked pissed. Yeah. Where is well, she anyway? You know, that's what I always say. If she'd asked, I would have told her grandma gives you indigestion. Uh, yeah. Speaking of Natalie, uh, she is uh, looking for Rosa. Is Rosa not in the closet? Uh, Natalie does not know Rosa's in the closet. Uh, okay. Natalie, what are you doing? I'm looking for Rosa. We brought her here. Did she escape? I hope not. Maybe she's outside waiting for a bus. If she is outside, okay, never mind. Just check nearby. If she's not nearby, then we'll find her. Okay. So Natalie will go poke her head outside. While she's poking her head outside, Larry goes over to the closet, unlocks the little padlock thing, opens the door, bites into his palm, and as quickly as possible tries to get his hand in Rose's mouth, assuming she is in fact in the closet. She is there. Uh, give me a dexterity brawl, please. Oh. I'd like to spend a Vitae for bonus dice. That is one success. Okay, that's all you need. Uh, You successfully managed to get your bloody wrist into her mouth and complete the blood bond. So do we see Larry like wrestling with Rosa in the closet? It's not really a wrestle. It's more just, um, you know, like if he was going to botch, she was going to get away. But he didn't, so he successfully accomplishes what he wants to do i mean you and, certainly and, do see him like manhandling rosa in the closet and uh and natalie is gone. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes and, larry uh, is manhandling rosa in the wow. closet yeah, and man- after handling. he's done manhandling he yells out <laughs> natalie i found her <laughs> okay uh natalie is on her phone on the front lawn Oh, can boy. um can I uh record um Larry um and Rose's uh you know interaction? Uh, sure. I, I'm not gonna post the TikTok or anything. That's weird. <laughs> uh no, you'd blog about it. Wow, blog. Well, yeah, I mean, because you can't catch us on camera, so like. I yes, thought Larry today. was the ancient vampire. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, yes. Yes. Also, yes. All right, so... As, as they're talking about blogging, Larry's not even sticking his head out the front door or like mm-hmm. a window. He's like right on the precipice of leaving... The building and he's just yeah he's yelling natalie come back inside what are you doing okay um and so meanwhile rosa is like huddled in the closet and she's like are you gonna kill me no no not that i know of 
Uh, it should also oh, be okay. mentioned, uh, you did lock this poor woman in the closet for the whole day. Uh, things have gotten messy in there. Oh. She probably needs food. That looks like a job for Natalie. Or Larry. I mean, these are his pets, after all. Note to self, next haven, no pet policy. Hmm. Natalie, get inside. Just I'm yelling. On the phone. Mateo's going to accidentally bump Larry outside. Accidentally. Uh, who do you think? And so she goes back to the phone and she's like, I swear to God, I have no idea what happened at the theater. Larry gets pushed out the door, hisses, and throws himself back into the building. <laughs> Just. <laughs> Natalie. Get off the phone. Yes, Grandpapa wants uh, you'd fix dinner. What? Oh, what? the Rosa. Right. No, we're not eating Rosa. Eyes Rosa. <laughs> we're not. That is the plan. Natalie, get inside. So you see, uh, Natalie, uh, hit a couple of things on her phone she's like it's fucking Devin do you want me to get him off your trail or not ah uh, yes please fine fine finish the call finish it okay and so she like hits more buttons she's like I'm so sorry my uh new boyfriend's bitchy roommate was bitching at me again yeah I thought that Lydia was the bitchy roommate what well, she- He's met my dad. Oh, that's true. Anyway, that's true. no, like, yeah, we have no idea what happened at the theater. Uh, oh, wow. Whoa, shit. Wow, even the BBC? Fuck. Okay, look, I gotta go. Uh, so she hangs up and then turns to you and then says, like, okay, so apparently what happened last night is global news today. Hail Belial. Ah. Don't know what that means. But like, apparently even like the the news people in India are talking about uh, the Detroit massacre. Detroit wow. massacre. The Cacciola murders. The, but, they aren't called the Cacciola murders, right? It's, it's but, just no, they massacre. are. They they know that it was you. Does does Natalie have like an iPhone or something? Uh, a a smartphone. I I airdrop the video I took to her. <laughs> okay. Of I Larry blood bonding Rosa. Yeah. What am I supposed to do with this? Oh, sorry. I meant to send that to the group chat. Group chat with who? Or is it whom? Is it who or whom? My, my bros. Oh, yeah, your, your little culty thing. Wait, are you they sending love, this stuff love to all the prince? That vampire shit. My Instagram is private. Right. Natalie, could you could you please get some some food for Rosa? Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ! Maybe a shower. Maybe, maybe. Rosa, go take a shower. You you you, you gotta untie her, Larry. She can't ah. take a shower. If she can't walk. She can't wash maybe. herself if her hands are bound. But on the plus side, if she's gagged, she can't sing in the shower. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So Natalie goes over to Rosa and starts helping her. And while that's going on, Larry starts 
he's all business today no like ah what is this what is that it's all straight to the point business 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 okay he sends a message over to made a note of the person Layla okay saying uh, I have housebroken someone for you wink emoji All right, you get back the response. Uh, excellent. Uh, drop her off. Gives an address. Excellent. Excellent. So, are you sure she's not going to run away? I'll talk to her first to make sure she will not run away. Okay. Explain for me life. So, uh, Natalie does help Rosa, like she unties Rosa, helps her like get into the shower and like uh, pokes through the kitchen uh, and then says, why do we not have any real food? Why would we need Uh, Because she hasn't eaten all day. Well, the reason we don't have real food is because we just woke up, like you, and also we don't eat, and if I'd have known that we were going to have a pet live in the house, I'd have probably ordered something. Yeah, okay, well, uh, someone needs to get Rosa something to eat, and it's going to be real, real hard, because, uh, oh, yep, there it goes. Um, So all of you who have phones, uh, they all go off at the same time uh, with that weird little buzzing that um, uh, Amber Alert, if you've ever gotten an Amber Alert on your phone, uh, how intrusive it is. And so it is informing everybody that uh, martial law has just been declared in Detroit. Why? What? What What is this? What? Wait, how did... What's... That's new. What's going on? Is that because of the massacre? Uh, Natalie's like, yeah, Devin just gave me a heads up that this was going to happen. For how long? Where? Why? Uh, because of the theater massacre, uh, I don't know. Oh, they know. Oh, they know. They just dis- they know. They declared that so that the hunters wouldn't get in trouble for killing vampires. They're coming. Okay. Um... Did he give you any instructions, Natalie? He knows I know something, but he doesn't know what. Wait, he called you. He called you. Yeah, he called me. Ah, uh, give me your phone. Hands Natalie, it over. Oh my realize... god, you start... break it. Please don't break it. Please don't he's, break it. He's phone. probably not gonna break it. Larry starts doing computer stuff to see if the phone was tracked or traced in any way. Or like see if there was like a tracking bug put on the phone from a weird text message about getting new newspaper or something weird spam like that just uh give me intelligence computer please natalie you realize he would kill you if he knew what you were even if you are his friend only one success no what success uh so you don't find any specific uh, tracking or bugs on the phone, Um, but she has not turned off location data. And you know that like, there are apps of some kind that could at the very least triangulate. Okay. Larry takes the phone, goes to the nearest window, 
mm-hmm. and yeets it just right out the window, maybe on a rooftop if he can arc it right. Okay. A building. Strength athletics, please. Larry, do you want me to throw it? Do you want me to throw it, Larry? Larry got one success on one die. No, no, I have, I have got these. I got these. Okay. Uh, you manage to throw it uh, into the bed of a truck. Oh. Yeah. I didn't even. I, I High five. It off the wall. Currently yeah. parked, but probably, you know, won't stay there forever. Oh, Larry, I got to teach you something. The nobles here in the U.S., when they toss something, they say yeet. So if you say that when you toss something, you're going to sound like one of the royals. So uh, Natalie watches you do this and then it's like, all right, so what do I do the next time he tries to get a hold of me? I think because your phone is gone. If he can't get a hold of me, like if I don't pick up the next time he calls, he's going to start looking for me in other ways. Mm, good point. He already knows where you are. Maybe that. it's um, maybe it's time to fake Natalie's death. <laughs> you know, if yes. they'd have identified her at the hospital, that would have been taken care of. Well, that's not my fault. She's the one who killed the driver. Yeah, that's true. Natalie, how could you? Uh, Natalie, you. why did you? He you said it was protecting you. I would have been fine. I would have. I did climb out from the pile of bodies. It's... Yeah, it sounds so gross when you put it that way. It is what happened. You know, I heard about this game, like Masks of Nya Nya Nya, where there's like a <laughs> thing of bodies that you have to climb out of. I don't know. Masks of a lot. Why do you make up words? We do not have time to make up words. We need to prepare for Devin. That's someone else's made up words, okay? Uh, Someone named a love crap or something. I don't know. Anyway. I don't know. Maybe Natalie should get the phone. Um... And, you know, be like, okay, I'm going off the grid, Devin, because there's someone after me. And then we get burners and toss the old phone and never speak of it again. Well, how, how about first things first? We um, let Rosa clean herself up and Natalie can go get some, like, food for her. Yeah, one thing at a time. Yeah. Get her some food and then take her to this address, Natalie. Pen and paper, write down the address. <sighs> All right, fine. Let uh, the kid who doesn't know anything navigate the city that's under martial law. Sure. We'll get right on that, Dad. Just pretend to be human. It's easy. See? Nothing about you is human. Yeah, I know you are, but what am I? Oh, fuck off. All right, I'm going to go take care of Rosa. Uh, So, yeah, uh, unless you stop her, uh, Natalie will go, um, like, give Rosa some of Lydia's clothes. Where is Lydia, by the way? She's still missing. Uh, uh, yeah, Lydia was kidnapped. Natalie. By her sire. So we need to rescue her at some point. Uh, you need to rescue her. I'm taking all of her clothes if she's gone. Oh, hold on a second. That is how you end up diablerized. Uh, okay, let's let's not get ahead of ourselves. Natalie, just go get some food. You can come back for the clothes or whatever. We'll make sure Rosa gets washed up. Yeah. Um, 
Paris has a really nice bathtub for that. Uh, no, I'm bringing Rosa with me because if I don't, you are going to eat her. Oh. We are not going to eat Rosa. I'm, I'm not going to eat Rosa. Cross my heart and hope to... I'm not even hungry. I need to find out a new saying. Yeah, I just had a whole nurse. Okay, that's gross. Uh, I could go. For it was sure. your leftover nurse. <laughs> Whatever, you know, I'm the, taking Rosa with me. Natalie does make an excellent point that we should keep some people food in the people fridge for if we have people over for dinner. Yes. It is a good idea. Get. We could, like, we could get a container, the, the plastic container, but put fettuccine in it. Get some yeah. lobsterine. There's things now that keep food cold, so you can keep like frozen food. Mm, the cold box. I, yes, I saw. Yes, this, but smaller. So I'll I will gently put my hand on Rosa's shoulder and just keep it there. And if Natalie tries to like pull Rosa away, I'll just hold her in place. Okay. Tug of war. Uh, so as soon as you touch Rosa, like she just sort of like freezes. Uh, essentially deer in the headlights and you can tell like her attitude is like maybe if I don't move he won't kill me that's a good plan actually <laughs> just saying <laughs> uh, and so Natalie's like okay look I need to take Rosa to go get something to eat uh, I'm just you know you can take her if you want I'm not going to stop you I'll, I'll activate Vigor Go ahead, take her. Okay. And I'll like not move my hand and I'll just keep like the grip on her shoulder. You gonna keep grip like uh, Emily Machete who is raiding with a party of two? Oh, hello, Emily. Thank you for the raid. Uh, yeah, we're playing human tug of war right now. I'm not playing, this Natalie is playing. I'm, uh, you know, I'm just here with my hand on her shoulder, not doing anything. Okay, uh, with your vigor, how many dots of strength do you have? Eight. Uh, okay. Hang on. Uh, okay. Um, so Natalie, uh, like reaches out to grab, um, Rosa by the shoulder and I'm not even going to make you roll for it. She only got one success. So she starts to pull and, uh, Rosa just sort of like squeaks in pain. Uh, and Natalie immediately lets go. I thought she was coming with you. Let yeah. her go. Come on now, that's enough. Natalie did let her go. No, you, you, I see your hand. Let her go. Come on. Make me. Oh, Rosa, do you really want Paris to let go? I mean... And Mary just, just looks at Teo and just with this look of just like, can, can we, can we kill him, please? Just. Uh, Paris is a beautiful non-binary creature of loveliness. I, the world would be a lesser place without them. Okay. So go ahead and waiting for Larry to tell me to quit making up words. Go ahead and roll me your resolve plus blood potency Paris, please. Okay. Uh, 
rest of my dice. Oh. Resolve and blood potency. Uh, no successes. Okay. So, uh, Natalie says, let go. And you feel the weight of her dominate force you to let Rosa go. Okay, I let Rosa go. Okay. Alex, uh, I, I give a big smile. Okay. Uh, and so Natalie looks kind of surprised at herself that that even worked. Uh, she grabs Rosa by the hand and starts just not running, but walking very quickly towards the door. Uh, and so if nobody stops her, uh, she's going to step out of the haven. Uh, you will see her swing by the truck to try and retrieve her phone. Uh, and then she will start walking with Rosa and Rosa's walking like very, very shakily uh, down the street ostensibly to get her something to eat. They, they grow up so quick. Admittedly, that was really impressive. But we should probably be just a little afraid of the fact that she can do that. Oh, no, I just, I let go because I wanted to. But, you know, look how proud she was. Right. Yeah. Um, that Ventru Jedi stuff doesn't work on me. What, what are, did you just say Jedi? What is a Jedi? We're what? probably more. They're an the ancient lines order of, of monks from Coruscant. Yeah. Isn't that in Italy? Shouldn't yeah, I heard of croissant once. Mm. Oh, is, I believe it's it, in France. It, yes. Oh. The Jedi like, are... like Paris. Uh, I mean, plenty of people have been to Paris, but I have never been to Paris. Yeah. Neither have I. But it's I mean, sad there. I don't think they have wolves. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait. No. We shared blood. That's, I've eaten Paris, not been in Paris. Wow. Whoa. Right. TMI. What? Larry's right there. <laughs> oh. No, not like, not like that. Jeez. I'm going to to track Natalie now. Okay, yeah. You you that. eat each other. I don't care. By this oh, wait. Point. We've got to so we've got to kill Natalie, right? I mean, no. we don't have any other options, right? No. What? Either no. that or somehow get her to Valdery. Something's got to be done. She's like a big fucking problem. No. You're you're the problem. How am I the problem? I'm part of the brood you know i'm doing my thing how could i possibly be the problem she's like you know some random vampire with a hunter boyfriend <laughs> i mean paris isn't wrong larry natalie's not brood and why <sighs> it matters because she doesn't feel the that pull you know i'm trying really hard like you see how much mentoring i'm giving her like i'm really torture i've never like, been this selfless in my whole un life you lack really proud of myself lack subtlety in your tutoring what i did last night that was golden oh what did you do last night aside from uh Kidnap Rosa. Killed Rosa's mother. And that's not subtle, Larry. Subtle. No. Subtle. Yeah. Uh, what did you what do? What did you with do with her kid? The kid ran away. I I, I couldn't uh, bring myself to do that, but everything else was oh. Yeah, so the, the kid is safe. The kid is not a loose end. Hmm. You do not have to worry about the small child. No one listens to small children when they say vampires <laughs> yeah. kill my grandma. 
That's true. That's true. Though the dead grandma might lend yes. some weight to their story. Uh, so that that is the the other question. Um, what did you do anything with grandma's body? I think we stole their car, drove it here. And I don't think I moved the body. Or the car? Or the car. Do I regain a willpower point for being sloth? Uh, yes. Perfect. Uh, I, I was going to move it, but it, it seems like it would take care of uh, itself. So that, that's not how that works, Lee. The car isn't there. Ah. What? What happened to the car, Larry? It took care of itself. Did you leave the keys in the car by chance? You know what? No. I am <laughs> I'm moving back into the old haven. You guys can have this one. No, I will join you there. I, no, I no, you won't. I, I, <laughs> oh, no, it is t- my dominion. So it is mine. What? Yeah, he like sprayed blood in all the corners. Don't you remember? So I'll uh, pee in all the corners. Me, well, I can't give pee. Give me a uh, raw, or not raw, give me um this was going to be an intelligence investigation. Okay. Who's making this roll? Uh, you may all make this roll. That's all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One die, no success. None. Okay. It was uh, intelligence plus investigation. Could I use wits plus investigation? Uh, sure. Okay. Three. Four, five. Oh, I rolled a 10. Okay. So, Larry, you have no idea how uh, medical services work uh, in this era, so you have no idea where the car is. Teo, they probably found a dead body in it and then had it towed somewhere. Larry? Someone found a dead body in the car and towed it somewhere. Which means that they will be back to investigate the scene of the crime. Which means there will be attention and police outside of the Haven. So, uh, because you got a 10, I'll give you one more piece of information. Uh, They probably took her to the morgue, where they will eventually autopsy her. Uh, find out that she was exsanguinated. However, there's a lot of bodies in front of her right now. Also, it's going to be very obvious she died from something very weird. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Very quickly. Like, Uh, no no uh, witness at all. There are no no bodies. There were plenty of they, so there is a wait list. They've, they've gone okay. through all of those bodies by now. <laughs> I am definitely lying to Larry. I want him to feel the <sighs> pressure. <laughs> Larry starts with like, no, there's no way. That that can't, no. That's, oh yeah, they're really there fast, a lot really sufficient. Uh, it was a very big, big case. And normally with, with massacres like that, they just look at them, go, yep, they're dead, move along. But this one body, since it's one and it was really strange, they're going to be on that really fast. I'd give it about a day. I will handle it. I will ha- I It is... Mm-hmm. I'll handle it right now. I, uh-huh. 
Yeah. With the magic of technology. Oh, will you? And and just how are you going to technology your way out of this one? Count Cacciola. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, well, I mean, uh, I think the big problem isn't so much like, you know, this dead grandma situation. I think the big problem is that the other vampires are probably going to be curious about who is responsible for the massacre. And unlike the dumbass mortals with their cameras and bullshit, the other vampires have like magical fucking powers and they're going to find out that you're the one who fucking did it. And then they're going to come for you. We need to burn the body. We need to get the body. The body? What are you talking about, man? They're going to like, you know, use their fucking, you know, Christian magic and like, you know, wave their spears and weirdo backward crosses over shit and like, you know, going to get your aura. Yeah, that's how that works. That's how Auspex works, I hear. Not that any of us know how Auspex works. I don't. No. Uh, I will let people make an intelligence occult roll. Oh shit, I'm good at that. I need to fortify. I need to, I need to I need to prepare. Uh, uh. Larry! And Matteo grabs both his shoulders. Larry. Uh. What needs to happen is you need to get Natalie under control. Uh two successes. Yeah, you know how hospice works. Like, you oh, don't know how to do it yourself, but, like, uh, yeah, you know exactly how all specs works. All right. They're going to put their fingers in all the body's wounds, and then they're going to see a picture of your face, like a photocopy. It's just going to be, like, how to catch a predator. I see what you did there. <laughs> oh. Actually, I mean, I guess all they really have to do is get their hands on the car, the murder vehicle, and then they can use their heightened senses to, you know, I don't know, smell your blood farts or something. Who knows? But they're going to catch you. It, it, uh... <laughs> so we got to pin this. What I'm saying is we got to pin this on somebody. Like we got to catch the culprit. Okay. Uh, just the person in mind. The feral gangrel? Yes. No, he's already staked and given to the sire. Yeah. The that's feral gangrel is going to drive a car to kill people? No, not driving a car. I thought you meant, I thought I you meant for use Rosa. Use a car to kill anyone. Yes, you did. You ran them all over. You ran them all over. Uh, those people, yes. Like yeah, the Cacciola killers. Killer. All right. Murders. So, very quick question. How many of you? Uh, gave their phone numbers to Lilith. Uh, who's Lilith? Mateo would have. Uh, the, uh, the beast in Windsor. Oh, the prince has my phone number. Uh, so those of you who, uh, for whom Lilith has contact information, uh, will receive the photograph uh, that I just posted into the Discord. Uh, that is of the actual bridge connecting Detroit and Windsor. And it is, in fact, in lockdown. And Lilith is sending text messages along the lines of, what the fucking fuck is going on? Uh... Uh... I mean, I'm not responding to that. I'm just going to uh, <clears throat> save that for later. Mateo will respond um, because he feels that Lilith has probably been in this situation somewhere before, or he hopes. And he'll text back. So... A thing happened. Larry's child is not rude and causing all sorts of trouble. And there's dead things and a hunter. 
Got any advice? Oh, that Lilith. Yeah, she probably has my phone number. That's true. Yeah, I get mm -hmm. it. All right. So she will send you a GIF that I have just posted. And I'm waiting for it to load in Discord. But it is, uh, you know, Interview with a Vampire. There's the clip where they put Claudia and the other woman in the sun pit. And they just so sort of sad. dissolve into dust. Yeah, she sends you a gif of that happening. Of that clip from the movie. He's going to text back, would love to, but Larry is in denial. All right, she will send back another gif. I love the way Lilith communicates. Uh, and so uh, it is a gif of Bill Paxton covered in blood from near dark. Diablerie. Got it. Uh, yeah, Lilith is saying you got to get with the program, Larry. I mean, you know, let's, uh, we got to get all on the same page here with this uh, Natalie situation. Time has come. Fine. Should we Rochambeau? How do we want to do this? No, oh, it is my child. Well, yeah, I but we're all going to grab her all together. So if we're all doing equal work. I think that we should do a three-way Rochambeau. Right? Wow. You know, we could... Larry takes his phone and starts trying to track Natalie as he starts heading for the front door and is just going to bite the bullet and take a step outside. Okay. Larry, wait. It's a race now. Larry. If you, if you want a Diablo. I'll, Larry, follow, I'll just follow Larry because when it comes down, I'm just going to follow Larry. I'm gonna be, Larry, you think you're going to be able to, I don't know, wrestle her to the ground all by yourself, but you're fooling yourself. Like, look at your little, like, you know, spaghetti arms. Come on now. <laughs> She's going to look you in the eye and basically be like, pull your shirt over your head. And then, you know, you're going to be totally, you know, effed. So, you, you know, come on. What if she did the Valdry with us? What if we said Valdry or die? Valdry or Diablery? I mean, that is a to. very interesting question on what would happen if you tried Vald like doing the Valdry with someone who wasn't rude. That is the question. Now I want to know. Um I, I mean, I'm not one for like tradition, but from what I understand, it's like, you know, frowned upon. I don't know. Okay. Oh, because free will and choice and all that, I suppose. Right. Yeah, exactly. If she She's like chooses it. a non-believer in a sense. All right. So as you are having this debate you hear a phone ring who's um, is that is it la vida loca uh no oh that's you not mine you realize that lydia left her phone behind oh mateo would calling lydia. grab it real quick see who's calling all right so the name in the phone is church lady and the text message says, I know what you did at the theater. And I think that's where we're going to go to break. Oh, my God. Already? What? It, I mean, we started late, but this is uh, our normal break time.
All right, we return. So the last thing that we ended on was holding Lydia's phone as someone named Church Lady who sent her a text message saying, I know it was you at the theater. So go ahead and give me a round of intelligence and politics roles, please. I have to use intelligence, dang it. <laughs> yeah. I I have uh, and there goes Devin. I will murder you. I know what room you're in right now. <laughs> uh, I fa- I failed the role. Okay. Two successes. Okay. What about I, KO? I get a chance die. And I don't really care to spend willpower on this. <laughs> Rolled neat. Okay. On the chance die. What the fuck? So, Teo, you know a trap when you see one. And Larry, you also sort of pick up a. This could be a feint. And it's also possible she knows something. Ah, you know what? I know exactly what to do. Uh, Teo, uh, unless someone objects, Teo's going to grab the phone and be like, hey, number one, I don't know what you're talking about right now. Uh, Number two, Lydia's missing. This is Mateo. Give me manipulation subterfuge. God, <laughs> I have nothing in subterfuge and one dot in manipulation. Well, so we're back to a chance die. Yeah, I'm going to spend willpower on this. Okay. So I get, I get, I get. You get three more dice for spending willpower. <laughs> I got a 10. Okay. Any other successes? Uh, Thresholds eight. Yep. No, just the 10. Okay. Uh, All right. So you send the message. Uh, You aren't sure exactly how she took it. Uh, But a couple minutes later, you get a response. We should talk. I will go ahead and send her my number via this phone. Okay. Uh, Your phone buzzes about a minute later. Uh, It is a text message that lists just an address. Considering my uh, coterie mate just got kidnapped, I'm not going to a random address. Okay. Well, we shouldn't go anywhere. Like, like that was my text to oh yeah yeah i won't i won't even bother bothering my covey mates with this I, i'm just gonna be like my coterie mate just got kidnapped in this text um i'm not going to some random place of doom uh you get a response text back uh my next stop is the prince or general my next stop is the general what did i do He'll, he'll text that back. Uh, the response is a link to a BBC article about the Detroit massacre. He'll text back. I didn't massacre anybody. I'll be waiting. Shit. Uh, Paris, Larry, I've got bad news. And he will wow. share the string of texts. Okay, maybe you two should go to that meeting and chill this chick out, and I'll find Natalie and meet you guys there. Or you go in case things get violent over there. I'll talk to my child myself. Actually, 
I think Paris should go with you, Larry. And I'll go to this address. Because if it's a trap, I'm the only one getting caught. Okay? And you two are my family. And I don't need you getting caught along with me, especially when you can bail me out. Possibly. Not only that, Natalie knows Dominate. She can only dominate one of you at a time. If she happens she to get to try to dominate me. It Larry, not... you're wait, Larry, have you In been denial. drinking have you, have you been drinking her blood? No. You sure about that? I'm sure. I think I would know if that happened. <clears throat> Like, maybe she's been, like, waking up early and, like, slipping you some? Because you're acting funny. Like, funny, No, funny. that's... No, that can't... No. Also, don't you die if you drink your childer's blood? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Larry did have some of Natalie's blood. Oh, way to rat out your Kobe mate. I thought I thought uh, Paris <laughs> was there also, maybe, or at least Lydia was. I thought I thought all of our cubby was there. Oh man, you kidding me? It it was the only way that he could get her to drink. I'm pretty like sure we were all there. His blood. Okay, so this was before she was a vampire. No, this was after. Oh. Um. Pretty sure. I don't yeah. think you're going to be able to kill kill this chick. I'm just being honest. Why? I mean, I'm, st- I'm still willing to ro- Rochambeau you for it, but even if you win, I bet when it comes down to it, you know, you're going to do the whole, you know. Oh no! I can't. Oh. It's too much. The human thing, you know what I mean. The two of you hmm. can go to the trap because, if I'm not mistaken, Paris is in good terms with the prince and would be able to get himself out. <clears throat> That's what I'm counting on. Is if is if I'm the only one who goes to this, I'm the only one that looks guilty. And and being that Paris is in with the prince, general, prince, uh, they could possibly get me out. Maybe, just maybe. I mean, they will get you out the, whether they are there I mean, I'm, or they are not. I mean, not, like the general doesn't, owe me shit i mean the only thing he wants from me is information so he's gonna ask me like who did the super duper murder thing and i'm gonna tell him the truth natalie and then you know they're gonna want to know where she's at no and, and they're gonna no. know who her sire is you know all that terrible they stuff. will want to know who their who her sire is it's me right. and i will be no. held accountable directly maybe You've also been videotaping. We could lie. Everything. Like, she doesn't have to be your progeny. It is. It is. No. No, It's just too late for that. All I'm saying is if we bring her dead, you know, then, you know, she is who we say she is. We could say she was trying to kill you. Hey, now we're thinking she was trying to kill you. So, you know. Because she's blood bound to you, you know. You know how those people get. They're crazy. Ventrue, am I right? At Ventrue, yeah. am I right? Larry gets up from wherever he's probably sitting and walks out the door. <laughs> okay. So... Uh, because this is Devin's fault, it will involve Devin. Uh, you go to open the door, 
and there is a very panicked Rosa. What happened? So, I don't. I don't know. We we were just walking down the street, and then then there was this this big black van, and these guys in like like helmets. They they grabbed her. And they just I, I I ran. Uh, somehow I got away. I don't know how I got away, but I got away. And they weren't interested in you. They took her. Oh boy. Can you give us any more information on that? Like a license plate or where? Like it was, it was, it was uh, big and it was black. It had like this really weird, like, like logo with like a sword and a shield and like, um. Can you track her phone, Larry? Since she has her phone? Knowing, knowing them, they could have gotten rid of the phone without, I'll, I well, will check. I why don't we pile into a car? If you know, you can do the phone voodoo. Maybe you can drive Teo and I'll pump Rosa for info. Yeah. Once, I I like this plan. I, oh, we could also just let I the hunters take this. care of her. Well, she's gonna rat us out. Mm. Hasn't she already? Well, I mean, at this point, this is a problem we got to tie up because not only is it the hunter problem, but she's also the solution to our vampire problem because we can pin everything on her. True. Okay. Do we have a car? Uh, just the one that was towed with the dead body in it. Uh, I'll try to find a car to break into and hotwire, I guess. All I've, right. I've, I have larceny. Yeah, go ahead and give me wits plus larceny, please. Okay, I will spend a willpower point for that. All right. uh three can you hear me three successes mm -hmm. yeah you very easily like you find a car that looks like it would be classic if they took better care of it but they didn't but it is perfectly drivable and has half a tank of gas i started up and get in the back seat with rosa okay can either of us drive? Is that something you can do, Dale? <laughs> uh, I can do basic driving, but if you're needing me to do anything epic, probably not. I.e., Mateo has no dots in drive. Aries, can you drive? Mm -mm, not really. I mean, I, I know how to drive, but I'm not like, you know. Theo, take the wheel. Yeah, let's let's do this. Okay. All right, give me that. I plus hope drag. it's not a stick shift. I don't know, audience. Is it a stick shift? <laughs> One die, and I'm gonna spend a willpower. <laughs> Oh, also, I got that boost from Spank My Betty. So would that act as a willpower? Yep. Okay. Then I will not spend a willpower. And I will allow this spanking to help me. Oh, shit. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. I rolled an eight, an eight, and a ten. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it is a stick shift. Uh. Like, uh, after a couple of false starts and, like, jerks and, like, the engine just randomly cuts out, uh, you do manage to get on the road with this car. So I'm sure it probably grinds a lot. <laughs> now, is, is everyone in the car? 
All yeah. four of yeah. us. Yeah, all four of us. Okay. And where are you driving to? Wherever Larry at? tracks the phone. Yes, yeah, sorry what Paris said. All right. Uh, give me intelligence computer, Larry, please. Uh, while they're doing that, I'm gonna success. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. While they're uh, while they're like tracking the phones and driving and stuff, I'm gonna question Rosa, uh, just like quietly. Mm -hmm. Um, just so it's like to kind of calm her down, use like a calm voice, get in close, like chat chat with her. Um, but then I'm just gonna like drink all of her blood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, all right. So uh, you don't get much out of uh, Rosa other than just like the van just pulled up alongside them. Uh, people in like really um, like high quality, like black helmets, like you can't see the face, jumped out, grabbed Natalie, threw her in the van uh, and Rosa just booked it, just took off running. Uh, okay. And she doesn't know why they didn't try to kidnap her as well. So uh, yeah, I'll just be pretending to listen while I like drink blood from her wrist and kind of like, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I I only need two blood points, but I'll I'll take all of it. Okay. Uh. So. Uh, Teo, you are too focused on driving, but, um, Larry, noticing this, are you going to do anything to stop it? Yeah. This is what Larry is going to do. Larry? Takes his chain, mm -hmm. rolls down his window and with the chain, breaks the window over Paris so that the glass falls on top of them. Okay. <laughs> All right, give me... This is gonna be dexterity plus weaponry, please. All right, children, don't make me separate you. <laughs> that is one success. Okay, so you do manage to break the window. And so, Paris, now you've got like window glass raining down on you. Bunch of little cuts. Because I've had a window break over me once. Yeah, I'll use the blood <laughs> I'm drinking out of Rosa to heal myself. Okay. I'll keep, I'll keep going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, open the door. I throw a chain I, on. I, to I, I told you that Paris. coworker was a problem. Throwing the chain onto Paris as fast as I can, and I'm going to throw Paris out of this car, whether Rosa goes with them or not. I believe that okay. is the dedication here. Just you might have to roll something special to something real special today. Yeah. All right. Ooh. So this is going to be a roll off. Oh boy. Uh, between Larry's strength, I will let you choose either strength or dexterity plus weaponry uh, versus Paris's uh, strength. And either athletics or survival. <laughs> um. I have brawl. Uh, let's see here. Yes, this isn't necessarily a fist fight. It's you trying to like anchor yourself into the car to not get thrown out of it. Uh, okay. Spend some vitae, spend a willpower. Because Larry's pissed. Well, I've got plenty of Vitae, so I guess I can do that. 
Um, can I activate my vigor? Uh, yeah, that's a reflexive action, so sure. Okay. That's such an intense roll off. Two, and that's three, okay. Um. Uh, two whole successes. Okay. Five successes. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so you I'll manage... keep Rosa with me. Yeah, you can take Rosa with you. Um, there's no real way for Larry to prevent that, but you managed to essentially just wrench the door off of this car with the force that you expend getting Paris <clears throat> and Rosa out of it. Uh, and you will both take a little bit of bashing damage uh, hitting the asphalt. Okay. And there he just sits back down, clears his throat, and goes back to tip typing. Okay. So, Larry, there's a whole bunch of cars honking because, uh, you know, this is there are people out um how are you responding to this tale? Larry, what the, f- what the fuck did you just do? Larry. He had it coming. Drive, Tao. Drive. I, literally, we will get the, what the, f- oh my God. Is Here's, Rosa please dead? Forget me. Uh, she's dying. Okay, I'll just like finish her off. Um, okay. As I walk after the car, um, oh my and, God. and just like drop her in the street. Um, okay. And like, kind of like, Hey, cool. Mateo's going to pull off to the side. No, no. Keep driving. Keep driving. We oh. need Paris. No, roll. we don't. No, we roll. don't. Paris, roll me two dice. Two dice? Okay. Oh, God. Hey, finally. (laughs) Hey. A failure. All right. Yeah. Uh, So that drops your humanity from seven to six? Yes. Okay. Uh, Go ahead now and then roll me uh, six to ten. No successes. Okay. Huh. All right. So you do develop a derangement from this. And now I got to think of a good one. Road rage. <laughs> oh, and um, can I get a willpower point for my gluttony um, flaw? Uh, yes, you can. Sweet. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, While I decide uh, what to impose on Paris, um, Teo, you see that you are coming up on an alleyway, and then maybe half a block past the alleyway is a police checkpoint. Well, fuck. Drive. Drive, Teo. <laughs> Larry, I've got it. You you gotta do the hacking thing and you hack into their system and put it as registered to us. The license plate, Larry. The license plate. Uh, I know it might be a little derivative or kind of um, obvious, but um, narcissism would fit me well. <laughs> that's what i was thinking as well all right wait paris doesn't already have that i mean now he I... <laughs> turn it off he was able to turn it off before and now he cannot <laughs> larry able to hack into police records and like state records 
to change the registration in the systems from a phone? Is uh, that physically possible? Theoretically, but you've got like about 90 seconds uh, before Teo, you either drive into the alleyway or deal with the checkpoint. Yeah. Into the alley. Into the alley. Okay, okay. Drive alley. Okay. okay. You know, it's a good thing that I'm dead because I'd have had a heart attack by now. <sighs> You'll grow out of it. You'll be right. the final death of me, Larry. And Paris, what are you doing? I'm walking down the street with this car door. Yes, um, and a dead body. <clears throat> well, no, I left her in the street. Okay. Um, maybe I should leave the car door with her so they think it's an accident. Nah, whatever. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm walking with the car door. Yeah, blood spread on my face. And uh, I'm like, you know, jogging after the car. I have my vigor on, so I guess I'm really fast um because that adds to my speed um but yeah other than that okay uh yeah you can easily catch up to teo and larry in the alleyway <clears throat> hey guys drop this i try to put the car door back on as i get in the car yeah dropped uh-huh um uh -huh. So there's a police roadblock ahead. It's probably not actual police. Just going to put that out there. And Larry is trying to make it to where the car belongs to us in their records. So uh, give me intelligence computer, Larry, please. I think if and you, you just need lick... more successes. Oh, okay. Hi, yeah. Paris, I think if you just lick the door and stick it, it'll stay, maybe. All right. So you managed to file the appropriate paperwork, but it occurs to you that they're going to ask for whatever's in the glove box. Gonna look in the glove box. Drugs? Teo, Teo, get, get the, get the, it's, it's an animal, it's small, it has like a little mask on its face. Raccoon? There, yes. Get one of those, convince it to get in the glove box. We tear up all the papers, make it look like a freak accident. They, uh, they ask for the papers. We go, oh yes, uh, certainly. Click, whoa, whoa, raccoon. <laughs> So oh, it destroyed the records. They are also oh, no. going to ask. First off, a raccoon will not fit in the glove box. <laughs> but a rat will. A small one? Yeah. Uh, they will the also papers. have a lot of questions about the missing door. We have the door. It's just like. Yeah, I can use my potence to kind of like wedge the door in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just hang on to the handle. Just, I pictured Paris putting the the door in the back seat and buckling it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're off to get it fixed. Actually, the shop's right up there. <laughs> oh, jeez. Now, what happens if they ask for one of those driver's licenses? Which they will. <sighs> I I have a driver's license, but yeah, it's I'm not driving, I guess, so that doesn't help. Do you want to pop in the driver's seat for now, and then after we get back, yeah, sure. we take over again? No, that makes sense. Um, because I'm really good at you know, well, basically everything, but I'm really good at talking to humans. <laughs> I think, well, I don't know. I, my face choice. is like literally smeared with Rose's blood and I'm covered in broken safety glass. Let's, um. 
and second thought. Can we just walk past the checkpoint? Let's. Is that allowed? Theoretically. Ah. Yeah, I'm really yes. good at sneaking. Oh, no. You're covered in Mateo. blood. How will you? Mateo's going to try and find some napkins or baby wipes in this car and just like, adios mio, clean off Paris's face. Uh, give me high or low. High. Hey, yeah, you find a couple, like, not baby wipes, but, like, uh, shop rags. Excellent. Like, right, 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 right. Yeah, I'll just, I'll be, like, real still and, like, kind of. Okay. Look out the glass pieces. Just, I use me. Gaskell. All right, so uh, you continue uh, down the street. Uh, and so are you walking towards the checkpoint or trying to avoid it or? Preferably avoiding if there's <coughs> a way. Uh, so I will let you, uh, you will all three have to succeed at a uh, stealth check. And if you don't succeed, uh, you will be caught and it will be clear that you're trying to sneak around. Okay. I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. Uh, is anyone else good with that? Yeah, this will be fine. What check was it? Uh, dexterity plus stealth, please. Yeah, this will be fine. <laughs> this can't possibly go wrong. And your points key. No, I don't think I will. One success. <laughs> uh, no successes in a one. Oh, Jesus. Oh. I'm that Literally. confident of how stealthy I am. I got an eight and a ten. So, three. Okay. Uh, so. Here's quick. Make yourself extra pretty. Yeah. All right, so Larry and Teo, as you're sort of like skulking in through like, um, you know, like shop doorways uh, and such, you hear uh, a very gruff, aggressive voice say, hey, stop right there, as they shine a mag light directly onto Paris. Okay, I put my hands, hands up. I'm like, don't you know there's a curfew? I was just looking for drugs, man. <laughs> okay. So the cop quit. <laughs> what? I was joking, guys. I quit. I quit life. <laughs> I, I'm done. I've seen all there is to see. So the cop advances on you, shining the light in your face, uh, other hand going towards the gun. What did you say? <clears throat> Just looking for my dog. Okay. <laughs> Can Mateo imitate a dog barking, please? Sure. Oh. <laughs> you want me to do animal kin? Yes. Or expression. Expression plus presence. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> I hate you all. <laughs> One success. Okay. <laughs> So you hear from around the corner what sounds like a dog barking. <laughs> Holy shit, and, real? And the cop says, <laughs> go get your dog and then get off the street. It's not safe. 
Okay, I kind of like look at the cop with like a double take, like, oh, oh, yeah, of course, of course, officer. I head over to get my dog. <laughs> you, you go around the corner to see Tail and Larry. Okay, I'm like, I look around around their ankles, like, where is it? Where's what? <laughs> Tell what, Paris? I can dog. What dog. There was no dog. What are you talking about? I don't know. I didn't hear anything. Did you? No. <laughs> Paris, are you okay? No, I, I think I might have like landed on my head when I rolled out of the car. I'm feeling kind of weird. Uh, you'll be fine. Come, come, come. We, we need, we yeah, you're right. I, I will be fine. I haven't felt better. Like, I look around and, like, it's just, like, you know, ants. Ants. Right. Okay. I, like, stare at Larry's phone, like, expecting him to do some hacker shit. All right, so what's the plan? Larry pulls up, uh, find my phone. Okay. I'm trying to find Natalie's phone. Okay. Just trying to figure out I think I have redeemed all of the chaos that people have purchased. So you find Natalie's phone. It is downtown. Where are we? Uh, You are just on the edge of downtown. Okay. This way, this way. Uh, uh, It's uh, this way, this way. Uh, while following Larry, I'll turn to Teo and be like, we should Rochambeau for who gets to eat Natalie, right? That's the only fair thing to do. Uh, I mean, we could just share. I'm, I mean, not to brag, but like, I don't know. I could suck like I. I think I would have an unfair advantage if we all like just grabbed and started sucking. <clears throat> um. Yeah, yeah, you're totally right. Yeah, you're you're yeah. You know that's. I think Larry should be forced to clean up his mess, to be honest with you. How much would it cause him consequences to uh, have to diabolize his own child? Thoughts? Yeah, I mean... It's a good point. That's fair. Larry's yeah. focused on his phone. Just no words right now. Just um, all right. I don't so, think he's gonna do it. We'll have to see. Yeah. So. So we should rash and bow to get to see who does it if he can. So Madley's phone, you can tell, is somewhere near City Hall. And you have, you have just learned that there is a curfew and this will probably not, is not the only checkpoint that is currently operating in the city. So you're yeah. going. But we have a foolproof way of getting past those checkpoints now. <laughs> <laughs> my dog, my dog, where is my dog? Woof. So that, that probably won't work for every cop. 
Are there like alleyways we can go through uh, <clears throat> to kind of like circumvent? Or the sewers? What? That too. Rose. <laughs> uh, yes, you could. You could use the sewers, uh, which is uh, smelly and awful, but pretty good at staying hidden. You, there's Nosferatu down there. You don't want to go down there. <laughs> oh, is that like every staircase? Yeah. Uh, you could every also. Every staircase has a maquette, every sewer, Nosferatu. Uh, you could also try the rooftops. Uh, that would be a little more difficult. Uh, the alleys uh, would be difficult just because that's where the cops are. There are no cops in the sewers or on the roofs. Well, I could are you like. Sure there's no cops. In the well, well, I could get onto the roofs pretty quick, and I could see three PO Larry to get up by there. You know, just like like make a little backpack out of him. Um, How tiny do you think Larry is? <laughs> I mean, Larry is like the average height for like the 1600s. So in Italy. Yeah, he's like a little like grandpa five. guy. I mean, <laughs> that's half the fun. Of what... I'm going to say probably like five foot seven. Don't remember what I have on my sheet. I don't even know if I have anything for height. Nope, I'm five foot seven. Larry is five foot seven. <laughs> Okay. And he's a king. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, and Larry was noble, so he got a lot to eat. His mom got a lot to eat. We were raised the well. You know, just <laughs> mercilessly exploiting the peasant class. Taking what is rightfully ours. <laughs> Disclaimer. No, I don't. I don't think that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Yeah. Uh, just you know. I'll how ride do you do on Paris's back. I can. Okay. I can give you some support. Do you? Okay. Like a can spider. You, can you climb up after us, Tao, or? Uh, <laughs> she's disappearing. <laughs> Sorry, this is just perfect because we have fire. I have learned how um, to obfuscate. I will see you there. Uh, are Are you actually using obfuscate? I I don't. No, it's just oh, my okay. green screen acting. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh let's see. What would I need? Because I don't have like vigor or celerity or anything. Uh, to stay Strength. hidden? Uh, to, to climb every mountain. Climbing, I won't necessarily like charge you for. You can just get up there. It's the stealthy maneuvers uh, that are going to be the difficult part. Oh, I'm good with the stealthy bits. Okay. So, uh, dexterity stealth, please. <clears throat> okay. I have four success. Okay, I'll One success. of those was a 10. I'll use some blood. It's a dex check. Uh, one success. Okay. So there are a, co a couple of close calls, but as vampires, you are very comfortable in the shadows and the cops like to announce their presence with a lot of like lights and sirens. And so you do manage to navigate your way without attracting too much attention. Uh, and you end up standing on the fifth level of a parking garage looking across the street at the building where you're pretty sure Natalie's phone is, uh, the Antoine de Cadillac Federal Building.
Oh, that's right. They're government hunters. <clears throat> this is a trap. Well, we want to kill Natalie anyway. Why don't we just like, I don't know, set it on fire. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know about you, but I don't want to go near fire at all. So the, the only problem with that plan is that it looks like the building is like made out of like glass and steel and concrete. Like it would be very difficult to get it to burn. You could do it. It would just take a lot of effort. What melts steel? Jet fuel. Wow. I wasn't going to say it. I wasn't going to say it. Wow. And Rachel's the one who says it. Negative karma. <laughs> Probably. And I thought I was bad. Ooh. <laughs> Love you, storyteller. <laughs> You're all driving me to drink. <laughs> LaCroix? Yeah, wow. you must be miserable with us. Hush. <laughs> well, uh, you know. Like they say, like uh, the uh, you know van massacre got us into this. Like maybe a van massacre is the way out. You know, Larry, you feel like taking another you know Mister Magoo spin into a building? <laughs> it's time for the Catchula Killer to make a move. Are there any vans on the street? Are there any like <laughs> parked cars? This is ammo. Yeah, yeah. This uh, I I put you he on the floor it. of a parking garage. Uh, so yeah, there's like there's oh, a it's couple. a parking garage. It goes up. Like, yeah, yeah. You are at okay. the top top Paris, floor. Could you get me a ramp? This, I can throw no. you anywhere. Miss no, Busters has <laughs> proved. <laughs> Mythbusters has proved that you can't do the speed thing with the bus in the 50 but miles per hour. It's just not doable. Larry saw it once in a movie and clearly what's in the picture box is real. So he's going to try and probably crash into the side of the building on the third floor. Okay, so <clears throat> there are a variety of there's like some soccer mom minivans. Uh, there's a couple really big like Ford F-150s. There's some work trucks. Um, so you, you would have to hotwire them. Uh, there is really nothing here that you could use to make a ramp of, the, um, sufficient to supporting the weight of these cars. to make this work. I feel obligated to now. Oh, God. Look, the van doesn't have points in vigor, okay? Or celery. Paris. The... Paris? Yes? I guarantee you cannot destroy that barrier right there. Destroy the barrier? That you can't. Right there, yes, that one. I guarantee you cannot pulverize it. I guarantee you. Your, your hands, they're too weak. They cannot crush stone. I guarantee it. Well, obviously, I can just kick that shit over. I mean, you don't have to, like, trick me into doing what? it. Like, you want me to smash some shit? I'll do it for free. Like, you know, <laughs> I just give it, I give it, like, a kick. What barrier are you indicating? Like, okay. Parking garages. The wall, uh -huh. yeah. If they go upwards... Oh. There's okay. a barrier that the ramp would have been going over. There's no ramp, so we get rid of the barrier. Okay, so well, yeah, so that little concrete wall. Okay. A little concrete wall, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you want to turn on your vigor, you can very easily knock a hole into this concrete. Okay, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, I just okay. like to get it over. <laughs> Mateo how, is literally just shaking much... his head. How much distance is between here and the like 
glass, like a glass, the closest glass window of the building. Like how many feet is that? Uh, I'm going to say you're directly across the street. So okay. what would that be like 30 feet? 30 feet. I would I'm have terrible to... with distance. No, that's, that's, that makes sense to me. 30 feet makes sense to me. I, I might be able to jump that. It would be close. You, you could get on top of the, we could get on top of the van or the, or the truck or whatever. I put, I put some concrete on the, the go pedal and mm. we jump off the van as it collides with the building. Um. The building will be hit. There will be a distraction. They'll rush towards it. Hey, you make a face. Why you make a face? This is this is just way more complicated than it needs to be. We could probably just find a vehicle on ground level and send it crashing in, and we climb up on top of the building and enter from the roof. You enter through the roof. I will crash something into the building. I'll take care of it. Go, go, go. Oh, boy. And Larry starts getting to work hot wiring a car to crash off of the parking garage into the building. Okay. Uh, Glorious just, fire. Just for shits and giggles, give me um, intelligence larceny, please. I forget what the first one was, but I think intelligence larceny was that. Mm. And Mateo's going to make his way to the roof of the building that they're going to... Yeah. Larry got two successes. Two okay. successes. All right. So what kind of vehicle are you targeting? The biggest work truck there is. Okay. All right. So Bigger you find... is clearly faster. Okay, so you find a, a municipal electrician's truck. Uh, so it's got like the um, a whole lot of tools in the back and like cables and wiring and even one of those little, um, I don't know, like a reverse crane, little basket that you put the guy in to move him up to the pole. I don't know what you call that. Yes. The basket. Um, yes. Okay, so you get that up and running. And you just like put like the concrete on the gas pedal. If the other two are gone, Larry's going to ride this thing into the building. Okay. Maybe put concrete on the gas pedal and then try and get to the back of it, knowing full well that when this collides with this, it's going to go squish as aluminum does, as cars do in movies all the time when something runs over a car. Okay, so you are going to be in the electrician's truck. Yes. Okay, what are Teo and Paris doing? I just want to know, does my um, blood bond, like I know it's not strong, but I have with Larry, does it make me think twice about letting him drive a car off a roof? You're pretty sure that he will get terribly injured. Okay. Uh, and at the very least, like, if you are about to start fist fighting hunters on their own turf, uh, you probably don't want to have any lethal damage. Okay. <laughs> um, hey, Larry? Hmm? Can we, can we Rochambeau about this Natalie situation real quick? No. Okay, good luck with the van. I walk off with it. <laughs> uh, All right. Larry, please don't do this. If you're so concerned about my well-being, why not give me some blood? If I do have a wound, I will heal it. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I would, but I'm really low. Starving. You just ate Rosa. She she was like she's like that big. A lot of she like she was like all water. I don't know what to say. Some some mortals are like that. I <sighs> empty calories. Come on, Paris. And Mateo's just going to walk the whole I don't know. I'm still hungry. I don't know what to say. (laughs) Okay. So Larry is in the work truck. Paris is just sort of like off to the side watching. What is Teo doing? Teo is is headed to get into that building from above. Yeah, I'll, I'll follow Teo since Larry won't listen to reason and rock, paper, scissors me. Okay. And so you're just going to, like, jump onto the roof of the building? I'm assuming there's, like, a fire stair or something. Or maybe can be reached by other buildings. Yeah, we could look for a fire exit, like a metal fire exit door along the side, maybe. Like sure. maybe even Even one without a handle could work. You do find the fire exits. Uh, I guess I just try to rip it off the side of the building. Okay. So. Harris, no, that'll make too much noise. I'm just saying I just gained the narcissism derangement and, you know, enjoy. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Strength athletics from Paris. And I've been trying to figure out what the fuck (laughs) to ask Larry to roll. Larry, roll me drive uh, plus intelligence. Excellent. Oh, God. I love how this makes what Larry's doing technically a smart move with his big intelligence. That's one success. Okay. Holy the shit. drive van into building. I think that's Larry's first success. Maybe the second, if you count the theater. I'll drive. Okay. And uh, how, how did Paris do on his roll? Uh, two successes. Okay. So with your vigor, you managed to wrench the fire escape door open just as Larry goes sailing through the air in this truck, crashing you're coming from the fifth floor? The highest point of the parking garage. Yeah, fifth floor. Okay. You crash into the third floor window of this building, taking three lethal damage. This is fine. And we're going to end a little bit early because I feel this is a good stopping point. To figure out what happens next. I turn to Tao and I say, he'll be fine as long as the gas tank doesn't light. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, this has been, this has been the Lyle's Brood. Uh, I have been your storyteller, Rachel, uh, chief cat herder. Uh, this is Vorpal Tales, where we play one and sometimes two games every day. Uh, if you want more grim dark horror, check out Solemn Veils on Monday night. Uh, or you can also catch me running Call of Cthulhu Mask of Nyarlathotep uh, tomorrow. Uh, we are off this Sunday for White Walls, but Rosie, aka Regular Sized Mom, will be running part two of Putinesca in Space, a V5 game. Uh, we're all playing Putinesca and we are in space. Uh, you can also catch Twilight 2000 and Mecha Hack on Taco Tuesdays. 
followed by season two of Fallout on Wednesdays. Uh, you can also catch Pathfinder on Thursdays, Scarred Land on Fridays, and the season finale of season two of Doom this coming Monday. Uh, for now, uh, former Forsworn, uh, just introduce yourself again to the audience and let them know when they can next see you. No. Just no. I mean, you don't have to. <laughs> no, I've uh, I have been Mateo trying so hard to keep Larry and Paris on track. And you can find it's working. me. We've both lost humanity, so you're doing something right. I have lost none, though. <laughs> That's from having to take care of you, too. You stooges, my God. Anyway, <laughs> you can find me all over the internet as I'm Changeling. You can find me on Etsy at Neat & Co. Designs. You can find me playing again tomorrow evening at 10 p.m. in Scarred Lands. Oh, boy. Yeah. Hello! I've been a headache for Rachel. I'm also Kisama. <laughs> you can find me on it's Twitter at Kisama. The audience! <laughs> the audience didn't crash a van into a wall, but yeah. They're, they're a handful too, I guess. Uh, yeah, next time you can find me is tomorrow for Masks of Nihilothrotep. And... For Dune, the finale this Monday. It's going to be a lot of fun. Go check it out. Uh, I'm uh, Caldun Khalil. I was playing uh, Paris Androfinos. Um, I know about the Nosferatu in the sewer because I'm I'm one of them. <laughs> uh, you can find me at, at K Khalil on uh, Twitter, and I play. Um, this Belial's Brood game every Thursday, um, and I will be in a superhero game um, later uh, tonight, I think right after this. Uh, but go watch Rachel play a sneak instead. Uh. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, because in about half an hour, I'm going to be appearing on Big Dead Industries for an all setite game uh, happening in South America in the 1970s. Uh, I will be playing a Nordic setite. Uh, she worships Loki as set. Uh, should be a lot of fun. Uh, then I will be back here tomorrow running Masks of Nairalathotep. Uh, and then uh, also around for Putinesca in Space and the season finale of Dune. Uh, the last game ended in Matricide and Atomic Fire. So can't wait to see what happens next. Oh, uh, uh, side note. There is no session of Defenders of Tomorrow after this. The cast is prepping all of their stuff to open next week. Oh, okay. My mistake. All right. Uh, yeah, so come watch uh, Big Dead Industries. Uh, should be a lot of fun. Uh, and now, before we leave you for Evers, uh, votes. Uh, vote for who made you laugh, who made you cry on the inside, who improved your evening. Oh, Jesus. I vote for myself. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I don't even know who to vote for. The chaos from both was just... Oh, my God. I was so well behaved. I don't even, I don't even know. <laughs> I oh geez. I threw me out of a car. If you're voting for chaos, then <laughs> I I have a favor I mean, to ask. Fair point. Can can I give it to both of them for nope. just damn yeah, pick? Shit. Okay. Must choose. I don't want to reward bad behavior. <laughs> I'm Make gonna pull for the audience. 
Oh, God. Now, um, I, I'm going to throw it at Paris for having the guts I, to I'm eat to Rosa. I'm going to throw it at Paris for having the guts to, I, to I'm eat to Rosa. Oh, no. You got the slaw. You got the You got the slaw. That's a feat right there. I was hungry. <laughs> oh, you weren't. I'm starving. That's why I drove a van into a building. <laughs> That's my um, that's my secret cap. I'm always hungry. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Paris, take it for consuming. My vote has to go to Teo for dealing with all of us here in the rest of the cubby. It would go to Rachel, but I I I feel like that's a bad idea. I get enough when they spend points. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I have to give it to um, Larry for finally, you know, uh, for finally snapping. Been trying real hard, uh, and 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 and, su and supposedly he's going to kill Natalie, which has always been the end goal. So uh, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, so definitely uh, to Larry, though. Um, yeah, I was conflicted because um, Teo did save my skin with that incredible impersonation of a dog around the corner there. I was. I was pretty blown away. Uh, right. even, I, I, had, I, I even had to act surprised. I was like, what? You got to be fucking kidding. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you all for playing. Thank you to our wonderful audience for contributing to the chaos. Uh, and we will see you back here next week for I don't even know what the fuck is going to happen. Stuff. Chaos. <laughs> Blood and fire and chaos. Um, and I will see you in half an hour over on Big Dad. So good night, everybody.